For more than 60 years, Bill Mitchell has travelled the length and breadth of the Yorkshire Dales, documenting the life of its inhabitants and their surroundings. He cut his journalistic teeth at the Craven Herald, then joined the Dalesman magazine and finally became editor. He retired in 1988, but he still contributes to local newspapers and gives lectures. We join Bill at Ribblehead as he recounts some of his favourite tales from the Dales. I'm standing on Batty Green, where there used to be a big shanty town in the days when Ribblehead Viaduct was built. Away in the distance is the viaduct itself. There's a lazy wind blowing today. That's one that tries to force its way through you rather than going round. And there's a chill in the air. And that's the sort of weather that the people who built the viaduct and the people who maintained it had to face. One man was going over the viaduct one day when the wind took his cap off his head and blew it under one of the arches and brought it back on the other side and dropped it back on his head. But he complained that the neb was the wrong way round. And there was also a case uh, where the wind uh, howling through there uh, onto the people who were working on scaffolding uh, actually was so strong that it made the planks go up and down like piano keys. Ribblehead Viaduct has got a kind of folklore of its own. Uh, and indeed, when the viaduct was restored, uh, Tony Frescini was in his little office one day when somebody reported there was a coffin on the viaduct. Well, he and two or three other men went out and they saw the coffin propped up against one of the parapets. There were some Irishmen about who refused to go anywhere near it. But anyway, they walked up to it and there was an arm sticking out. But that proved to be a rubber arm and indeed it was a hoax. Uh, but uh, the police had to be informed and eventually it was officially removed. This area is populated by some of the uh, most wonderful hill sheep in the country. They're known as Swaledales. You, they bob up everywhere, even on the side of the railway. And actually at Bleemore signal box, it was quite common for the signalman to look out and see uh, a sheep, even having a lamb uh, by the side of the track. And there was one occasion when the inspector came along and got very excited because a train was due and there was a, a sheep actually in the six foot between two lines and it didn't seem to want to budge at all. And then eventually they heard the toot of the train and the inspector said, for goodness sake, scare it off. Hey, it'll be all right, said George Horner, who was on duty. Anyway, the train came, just before it arrived, the sheep nonchalantly got to its feet, walked to one side, the train passed and it came back and settled down to sleep again. If you saw a cuckoo in this particular area, it probably was heading towards Ostwick, uh, which meant that it would have to fly virtually over Ingleborough, because Ostwick is known as Cuckoo Town. The local people tried to wall in a cuckoo uh, when it was roosting in a tree overnight in the hope that if they kept the uh, bird in the area, then they'd have summer all the year round. It didn't quite work out, uh, but Ostwick anyway is a bonny little village. It doesn't need a cuckoo to enhance its reputation. It's very nice to be in the Tradic again at Ostwick after all these years. I used to live in Ostwick and uh, uh, and I remember fondly coming along to this place and finding a little bit of old England here and uh, some rather appetising food. When I think about uh, the Dales, I always think about Kit Calvert, actually, who lived up at Hawes. Uh, it was an astonishing man. He was the man who really set up the Wensleydale uh, cheese making factory at Hawes and uh, he, he was a farmer and uh, a book collector and a philanthropist. He had a funny little bookshop actually in Hawes and uh, uh, he used to have two kinds of books. One was uh, fiction and one was non-fiction. The, the fiction used to sell for threepence and the non-fiction for sixpence. And if you met him at all, uh, as I met him once on the bridge, he was very, very informal. In those days, traffic uh, crossed that bridge at the rate of about one every half hour. Uh, unlike today and so he'd just take his cap off and throw it down in the middle of the bridge and and kind of run his hand through his hair and I'd take a photograph of him and uh, the little dog sometimes would be there and so he'd pick that up and other times it obliged by putting his clay pipe in his mouth and he used to smoke black twist through clay pipe. He started with his twist actually uh, when there was a, a funny old sheep uh, about the place and it seemed to have an appetite for black twist. 
and, uh, and he kept giving it the black twist and then he had a donkey which occasionally stopped and so black twist seemed to revive that as well so he started chewing it himself and then ultimately smoking it. And so he, he was quite a character actually and very, very local in his ways. But also he was a, a local preacher and uh, he used to translate some of the Bible into, uh, into dialect, Yorkshire dialect, more particularly Wensleydale dialect. And one of them was, and Jesus went down bit what aside and sought disciples fishing. And he shouted, copped out. And they said, note. And so he said, cast the net on to the side. That was, uh, that was Kit Calvert. Uh, just a bit further up the dale, there was a little village called Apposet. And I once met a, an old man there and he was smoking a clay pipe, a grizzled gray face. And, uh, uh, but they're very taciturn in the dales and taciturnity is the, the ability to say note for a long time. And, uh, and so the old boy sat there for about 10 minutes. Then he said, I've never seen the sea. And there was another pause for about five minutes. And he said, it's no but water. And then there was another pause for about five minutes. He said, I don't suppose many people have seen Apposet. And that was the end of the conversation. I never got another word out of him. Really, it's uh, fascinating to consider the ways in which thrift operated in the Dales. There was an old man, he wasn't so good at all, wasn't so weal as they say up the Dales. And uh, in fact, he was dying, that's the general feeling. But uh, his wife said, I'm just caught going out for a short time. Will he be all right, love? I, he said, just light me a candle for my last hours. She said, oh no, you're not price the candles. And he said, oh, go on. And so she said, right. And so she lit the candle. And just before she went out, she turned to him and said, if you feel yourself going, blow it out. I was very fortunate uh, one afternoon to uh, uh, meet James Herriot in his home, just the two of us actually, and uh, he spoke very quietly and very frankly about his life. Uh, I mentioned uh, one of the films I'd seen when there'd been a rather elaborate wedding between James Herriot and his lady love, and uh, he laughed at that and said, there were only five of us in Thirst Church when that wedding took place. Uh, the, there was the parson, myself, and uh, my wife, uh, and uh, my boss, who gave me a five pound note as a wedding present, and someone else, possibly the verger. Uh, and afterwards he said, uh, we didn't have a proper honeymoon. Uh, we went to the pictures in the evening, then continued up the dale to Carperby, where we stayed at the local pub, and uh, spent most of our time going round checking cattle for tuberculosis. Uh, so much for romance. One of the people I really enjoyed meeting up the Dales was Hannah Hawkswell. And uh, it was wonderful to go along to her farm, actually. Um, she was subsisting on 160 pounds uh, a year. Uh, she had about half a dozen cows. One of them was called Rosa. And Rosa was a real pet. Uh, one night, it was so bitterly cold in the house uh, there was no fire, uh, no electricity, that she went out into the byre and in desperation she drew a pint of milk, a pint of warm milk from Rosa, and then she lay down beside the cow and fell asleep. And so she did at least keep warm that particular night. I hope you've enjoyed these tales and recollections, uh, and I'll finish with the Dale's saying. If that does hope for note, do it for this end. <laughs>